can you put on the chat window and it's already started questions from you all and questions you can feel free to key them in. Now what can we learn from success and failure? Uh, from success and failure I have put a couple of bullet points here which I can share with you. First let us look at a success scenario. Now what can we learn from success? Uh, success at the time of success one of the most important thing is that we acknowledge the people who have been responsible for success because there are a lot of contributions for many people people may have done certain sacrifices they might have stretched themselves if you are in people saying what are the sense of project success so it's a good time for us to acknowledge the contribution of all our team members at the same time there's an opportunity here for us to look at is the areas of improvement. You know, in certain areas, we might have had people who have stretched themselves or done some extraordinary effort to make the project successful. But as a pro, as a pro to figure out is, is this a sustainable method of working? If it is not a sustainable method of working, then what are the areas of improvement? improvement that we can take forward. So, so there were maybe and we were the right people that we had on the project and as such it is a warning for us that we have to be better prepared in certain areas. So that could be a takeaway from the successful project. Now coming to a project which is perceived as failure. Why I say perceived as failure by stakeholders? Because you have put in effort, we have put in effort has been put up and if the success metric fine so maybe as for the success metric the project is a failure but everybody has own, own perception so as long as uh, if you do, if the common uh, metrics is available which, which you are defining the success and failure and which is accepted before the start of the project it's fine but otherwise it's just the project stakeholder involved but whatever the case may be as long as this project is considered a failure by the stakeholder the project manager is ultimately responsible. I know it is a thankless job, communication aspect. Now, if we look at the communication aspect in the beginning, we mentioned the ongoing formation of setting expectations. So when you are trying to set the expectations, you are trying to manage the risk associated with the perception of success and failure. What, because there are constraints in the project, there are Boundaries in so ongoing communication with the stakeholders is important as, aspect of expectation management. If by doing all that as well, if still it is perceived as a failure, the project manager has to own the responsibility. There is no moving away from that. The third area, the third point that I have here is that as an individual leader, what can we learn? So if you reflect on an ongoing basis, like communication is an ongoing thing similarly how our project is progressing on the desired outcome is an ongoing evaluation that a project manager can do on an ongoing basis maybe it's a daily exercise maybe at the end of the day or a predefined time that he has where he can sit alone or maybe with a team to start with but some of the time has to be spent alone especially for the self evaluation in terms of what are the behaviors or the mental state the person was in? Because we get angry sometimes, we get agitated with certain behaviors that affects our performance. So what we have to look is, we as a leader, because when we are a leader of the team, the people look to us as a leader. Every small action is noticed. So as we know from the uh, as project managers that you know, not everything is verbal communication. So 7% is only verbal communication. The rest is the tone that we speak in, the body language that we exhibit. So we know all these facts. So when we are the team leader or when we are leading the project teams, they also are looking at us in the whole body. They are not just looking at the words that we speak. So how was our tone, how were the instructions that we were giving, what is the body language we were exhibiting, whether we were in sense of confidence, whether we were ourselves afraid or whether we were you know, telling something about the management or telling something about the client. So were we guiding, were we motivating them or were we inspiring them or were we you know, creating their, uh, you know, helping them in the project. So all these things kind of a reflection on that will against the basic fact that whether we are guiding them or inspiring them. If we are guiding and inspiring our team members, we are doing a fantastic job as a leader. But if during the day or during the week, 
we have not been at the best of our uh, emotional health or we have not been able to best to maintain our uh, uh, temperament to that level. So where are we guiding or inspiring? If we ourselves were down a bit, or frustrated a bit, we had certain negative emotions coming in our mind that has affected. So who's responsible for that? I'm not saying nobody, anybody can be perfect here, but the point that I'm trying to highlight here is that being aware of how our day goes by is an indicator, it's a kind of a self-assessment that we can do. But by doing the self-assessment, the idea is that to regulate yourself better and with time to come, you can influence yourself because many other things are referred to you know taken one day at a time it's not just change a head you can just switch over to something new be characteristic the more opportunities are presented to you by your organization you should be happy it is you get a chance to you know learn and grow as a leader